Now we're on. There we now go. we're on air. Now we're on air. Yeah. Now all you poor people out there have to deal with this. Oh. All of us. Well, I think that whoever is watching, <laughs> Harry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Little ambiguous. Oh, this is so, classic. So California's a little crazy tonight in the view. I, I could see that. Yeah, you guys have got Perseid fever. Hi, everybody. My name is Fraser Kane. I'm the publisher of Universe Today, and this is your virtual star party for Sunday, August 11th, 2012. 13, 13 not 12. 13. It, 13. We've been in this for a little while now. I know, I know, I know. We're almost through it, actually. Um, and this is your uh, You Must Have Cloudy Skies Perseid Meteor Shower Edition. So if you're watching yeah. this, it means that the you've got cloudy skies and storms, and you're not if able not, to... not, go outside. Yeah. Skies are clear, <laughs> go outside. Yeah. yeah, seriously, don't watch this right now. If your skies are clear, get outside this, this and watch the Perseids. This is recorded. Yeah, you, you can, can watch, watch this after. later. Yeah, yeah. yeah if you, you, the Perseids, they're not, they're, they may never come back. Ever. Ever. Except no. for, like, it might, you know, next time. Like, I can see the number of viewers dropping. I'm, I've almost chased them all away. 19, <laughs> Great. 12. I, I'm going to yeah. start using you for retention marketing. And... <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, so anyway, so this is a virtual star party. If you have no idea what this is, this is where we hook up a bunch of telescopes into a live Google Plus Hangout and broadcast the night sky. And joining me this week, we've got four astronomers, three astronomers, and uh, I guess yeah, four astronomers and Scott. So let's uh, let's go through them here. So we got Bill McLaughlin in the <laughs> Oregon area, mysterious Oregon area. Uh, we got Gary Ganella and his uh, device. Okay, Gary, now you can turn on your <laughs> intimidator. Yes, man. Slightly pissed off scientist stuff. That's awesome. <laughs> and then I'm going to mute you or turn it off. <laughs> I think I will go with mute. All right, he's going to turn it off. Okay. Because otherwise, it'll just keep switching the camera to you, Gary. Okay. Uh, we got Roy Salisbury. Hello. Hey, Roy. Uh, now, I understand you got a little bit of light pollution tonight, Roy. Just just a little bit of light pollution. Now, see, this is funny to me because you have built your custom observatory in, like, a really dark place. And I would have thought that you would have not built your your observatory near some kind of light pollution. So so what's the story here? I left the lights on. <laughs> <laughs> Big pellet gun. Oh, you left the lights on at the observatory. Well, just, just, we'll wait. Go on over there yeah. and just turn yeah. them off again. So it's like, what, a three-hour drive for you to go and turn the lights out? Two and a half hours, yeah. Two and a half hour drive for you to turn the lights out. You can't just clap at them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you One should board. install the clapper and then a sound bite that just goes electronically to clap for you to turn them yes. off. One more thing to automate. Yeah. 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 Uh, and we've got, uh, this is cool, check this out. We've got uh, Dr. Thad Zabo and his, and my virtual star party co-host, Scott Lewis, together in one place. In meat space. In meat yeah. space. And this is uh, Dr. Zabo's fabulous new backyard, right? For his Yay. new house. Fabulous. Yay. Absolutely. It is, he's got a nice house, but nothing expensive inside, so don't rob him. No. Okay, all right. Uh, books. I've got lots, lots, and lots of books. Lots of books. Yeah. People love stealing books. I'll, I'm going to steal some books. They Wait, should, sir? yeah. I'm there's a lot. Telescope i got to drop out for a second. I'll be oh, back. Sure. i got to reboot my computer. It's no problem. acting up. No problem. It might have been all that electricity going on <laughs> yeah. in the background. Yeah, don't you think running 6,000 volts right next to yeah. it had a bit of an effect? Did, did, uh, did someone let off the EMF in the background as well? It just completely shorted out all of... <laughs> All the, the hills. It's not just a Jacob slider, it's an EMP. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, for uh, anyone who doesn't know, uh, actually, actually I already mentioned that. So we're going to go a bunch of telescopes. So they should know. Virtual, but, yeah, they should know. They should know. They know, you know Come on, do. it's us. It's us. We're it's, off. It's, it's us. Um, okay, so let's just move through it. And I'm going to start, actually, you know, let's start with what uh, Thad and Scott have in their yeah. eyepiece because there this is something that we haven't had for a while. You're welcome, yes. Internet. Yay! And that will end up losing by about 9.30 Pacific time, but hey, here it is. So we've got 15 more minutes of Saturn. Well, let's just leave it on here and have our precious time with Saturn while we can. Mm, All right. Dad and I are going to snuggle, <laughs> yep. and you guys can watch Saturn. You enjoy the big gas giant there. <laughs> 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 
See, this, this is what happens when Scott goes to places. <laughs> Silliness ensues. Is this what's going to happen tonight? Because I will mute you guys. I, um, I, I don't know. You've you've met me in person, Fraser. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I have. Uh, so this is this is great. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. So yeah, and, I mean, seeing's not terrific, but we're looking. I mean, it's way low in the sky. It's really low. Maybe about you know twenty degrees up altitude. And it's right over my house, which has probably cooled off pretty well by now, but obviously not a lot. And still, I mean, you're looking over a lot of the city of like Long Beach and yeah, probably Compton, I guess, in that direction. So it's a little muggy out too. Yeah, it is a little muggy, but uh, but hey, Cassini's division shows up every once in a while, like every like fifteenth frame or something there. So well, you get these moments of sharpness. Like if you yeah, watch yeah. it, you can see for a second there it goes sharp and then back to blurry again. Keep staring into your monitor. <laughs> You'll see it. Wait for it. Now, you did a bit of an accidental experiment at the beginning there where you showed off the moons, and there was a bundle of them. Can you think you can make yeah. that happen again? Let me see. It's Because the, the thing is, when I did that, I didn't have the Barlow in, but let's 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 try it. Let's play around. Let's see what we can get here. So crank down the frame rate. Crank up the shutter. Shutter. Uh, um... No, let me let me zoom around a little. I see bit. one. Do you? No, I think you see a hot Yeah, pixel. there's a couple hot No, pixels. no, I see I see one wiggling with Saturn, but No, that's me. Sorry, guys. Wiggle it just a bit. <laughs> Not on air. <laughs> All right. All right. Oh, wait. No, wrong way. Come back here. Goofy planet. So, just to explain what that is doing here, uh the brightness of the moons compared to the brightness of the planet is very different, and so for us to be able to see the moons of the planet, we actually have to really crank the brightness on the on the planet itself. How can we get this blue along the bottom of the planet and then the this orangish color along the top? Crappy optics. It's called chromatic aberration, and so the blue part of the image and the red part of the image don't come to focus at exactly the same place. So... Yeah, so if I if I want to try processing this, it's something I'll have to correct for. I'm not picking up moons. I'm just picking up, like, hot pixels and garbage. Hot pixels are places where your sensor decides it's just going to get some light stuck there, and then it keeps coming through in every after image. And so typically this is why in astrophotography you have to do things like a dark frame and a flat frame and a bias frame. Um, darks and biases are used to kind of clean that up. And rather than have something that people are then going to screen cap and say that we had a alien spacecraft show up during the VSP. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this down again to something where we're actually seeing the planet. So, sorry. I mean, I can pop out the Barlow and we can look for the moons, but who knows what will happen as we try switching any equipment. So let me, let's just yeah. leave it like this. All right, all right. So how? So for anyone who wants to see Saturn, uh, where should they look? Up. Up. <laughs> Not too far up. Yeah. Dr. Up. Zabo, after we've had the uh, the bad answers from everybody else, Dr. Zabo? <laughs> so you'd be looking southwest. Um, right now, if the moon is still up, I can't tell if the moon is up because it's behind my house. I'll look um, for you. But uh, Thanks for that. you'd be looking to the left of the moon. So you would have the star Spica, which would be bright blue-white, which would be kind of immediately adjacent to the moon. And if you are in um, the eastern part of the... or if you're in East Asia, I guess, you'll see the moon occult spica later this evening. So right now it's daylight for you guys, and I don't know why you'd be watching this during the daylight, but if you are um, on Monday, because it will also be Monday for you, um, yes, the moon will move in front of spica later tonight, and then Saturn is just to the left of that. Right. Next bright object over in that part of the sky. Yeah, and so Saturn is that sort of orangish, really it's kind of the brightest object to the west. Well, Arcturus, Arcturus is pretty bright, so mm. I, you know, don't get confused with Arcturus. Arcturus is kind of a yellowish, orangish uh, star that will be brighter than Saturn. So, but near the moon, if you're looking near the moon and to the left of the moon, kind of cream-colored, and it won't be twinkling. That's how you can tell it's a planet. It's not twinkling, and so that's Saturn. Now, Pyro Nitro asks, a bit off topic, I just tried a time lapse of the night sky. What's a good setting to use on a DSLR? 18 millimeter f3.5. What do you um, think? How dark is I mean, that's the thing. It depends on like how much light pollution and how much there yeah. is. The so back. last night, I did a time lapse uh, with a 14 millimeter, and I set it at 4 uh, with an ISO of 1600 
Um, and I was doing exposures of about 20 seconds. Yeah, you want to go as it high. It's pretty good. Yeah, you want to go as high in ISO as possible. I mean, if you're doing a time lapse, don't worry about the noise. I mean, higher ISO will mean more noise. And, um, you, you know, it depends on how deep you want the, the time lapse to be. If you're just shooting, like, a conjunction, like just planets and, and brighter objects, five seconds will do, but 20 seconds could get you. Um, most of the stars you might even, if you're somewhere dark enough, you might even be able to pick up some Milky Way with uh, 20 seconds. Yeah, and so last night I was trying to get, uh, it, was, it was awesome, I was trying to get the, uh, the meteor shower mm -hmm. and utterly failed, but I did get a, uh, the International Space Station went nice. right through my field of view. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah I, let me see if I can share my view here. Um... I don't know if that's coming through. Does that work? There. Hey, that worked. I could totally full screen now. Neat. So yeah, so I was we were watching it and the uh, the International Space Station, I knew it was coming around that time. It was gonna be there around nine forty five or so last night. And I was like, Oh come on. And you could see it's going right, almost right through Cassiopeia there. Mm -hmm. so you can see this is this is Cassiopeia here, the W. Yep. And there's Perseus there. And that's where the meteors come out of. So oh, you have the double cluster in your shot. Yeah, you can see the double cluster and you can see Andromeda too. So this is um, this is Andromeda here. And you can see to always find Andromeda. So you find Ca if you can find Cassiopeia, right? It's that W. Then sort of below Cassiopeia to the left of it is Perseus, and there's the double cluster there. And then to the right and below is Andromeda, and it's got these three bright stars. And then the middle star you go up, and then a little to the left. And then there's that hazy bit right there, and that's the galaxy Andromeda right there. It is. So, it's coming right for us. It is. <laughs> coming right for us. So <laughs> let's see if my screen share will can turn off. Hey, it worked. Okay, great. All yeah. right, so uh, let's move to some of the other things that we've got here. So, uh, so Roy, what do we got? That is SH2125 or IC5146. Oh, it looks like the Triffid to me. Oh, that's the cocoon. This is the cocoon. Okay. Are you shooting H alpha or? That's luminance. That's luminance. Okay. I tried H alpha, but I did just take too long. <laughs> Got it. From your bunker. Yeah. <laughs> speed up, photons. Why are you only going at the speed of light? Darn it. <laughs> Can't you do a warp eleven? <laughs> So is this like just a just another boring star forming region? Just another boring yeah. nebula. And again, it's a combination of your hydrogen, which is providing most of the glow, and you can see dark nebulae, these kind of dark molecular clouds cutting through it. And this pattern repeats over and over again, but never exactly the same all throughout space, all throughout our galaxy, over and over again. All these emission nebulae with their kind of star forming regions that are darkly imposed on top of it. But of course with this one you also can kind of see that you know, okay, there's the bright area with the gas, and then around it, it seems to get darker, and then you get more stars outside of that. So that's a little bit of hint of the dark nebula that is uh, surrounding the emission nebula portion of this. So, uh, oh, so Pyronitro just notes uh, 20 seconds ISO 1600 plus or minus, right? So, so just to sort of clarify, it depends on what you're trying to get. Like I did a time lapse, and I wish I had shorter. Images like I would have preferred like five second exposures as opposed to the twenty seconds because things were jumping pretty fast in my video. So I would have preferred mm -hmm. a shorter exposure. So I think I would have, you know, if I when I do my next one, I'm going to try a higher ISO and then shorter, much shorter exposures like five five seconds. So, but just give just give it a try and see what you like. Yeah, I mean, zoomed out that far, I don't know. It's just... I guess I guess it, yeah I'm I'm just just trying to think of, of how smoothly things uh how smooth things will look. Typical if you're if you have a good um you know one of these good DSLR lenses and you're zoomed out all the way, um, t ten seconds gives a pretty smooth motion. I mean five would be even better. Yeah. Um, but I'm trying I'm trying to think of what I did for the 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 uh, Jupiter Venus Mercury conjunction back at the end of May. Mine's pretty fancy, the the lens that I'm using. So I'm using a, uh, it's called Rokinon, and Corey Schmidt has the same one. It's a 14 millimeter from Rokinon. Okay. And it's, uh, it's it's amazing uh, lens and relatively inexpensive. 
Is that the one you had at South by that you just no you weren't you wouldn't shut up about? No, this one's even better. Oh, okay. really? Yeah, I really won't even shut up about this one. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, it was a good. I liked the lens at South by. It was a really good. Yeah. Let me see. Let me see if I can show you the whole time lapse again. All right. Is that the one? Is that gonna go? Oh, that's not it. Okay, sorry. For this shame. Is, this isn't helping at all. This is the worst star party ever. No, it's not. Dad and I are together at last. Yeah. And <laughs> it's my... You guys have met before, haven't you? Oh, okay, yes. so, so, yeah, so it's not for a star, but not under the stars. That's true. Uh, so here we go. So I was out, uh, and it started, and as it got darker, the fog rolled in, and so the whole thing turned red, and there's the space station going through it. I thought that was awesome. Very nice. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to move to... Uh, ooh, God, ooh, I like Bill's view. Okay, Bill. That's uh, NG. It's, and it's kind of a... It was still a bit light when I took it, so it's a little bit uh, fuzzy. But it's uh, NGC7331, otherwise known for some reason that maybe somebody else knows, but I don't, called the Deer Lick Group. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and if anybody knows why it's called that, that would be uh, education for me because I don't know the There's main the galaxy problem. here. And you can kind of see a satellite galaxy, and there's another one, I think, down here. Yeah, there's about four. There's like five or six of them actually off to the, the left. Um, you know, maybe a longer exposure makes them a little more obvious, but... Um, I'm not sure if, if, you know, deer lick group, like, is it a deer and it stopped at the stream and it's lapping up the water? I don't know. I don't know where it's getting... <laughs> it's getting Bambi of space. <laughs> is it a person <laughs> named John Deerlick? Did, did he have, no, it's like... actually two words. It is yeah, it is two words. Yeah. I, I don't know. Deer Maybe, and uh, lick? Two people? Lick. The Lick Observatory? Hmm? I don't think so. Uh, no. No? Right. All right. No. What's surprising is that this is not a Messier object. I mean, NGC 7331, it's, it's a galaxy that's between magnitudes 8 and 9, and so it's something that Messier likely tripped over at some point, and maybe to him it was just like, oh, that's clearly not a comet, so I'm not going to put it in my list. You put the, the Pleiades in your list, dude. Come on. <laughs> so, yeah. But, but, yeah, this is something that's, that's bright enough, that, you know, typically... So he should have seen it. Yes. And otherwise, he just kept rediscovering this comet. So yeah, wow! There's that thing in Pegasus. There's that comet, oh, yeah. Oh, right. It's not. Oh. I'm not putting it in my list. So darn you, thing, tricking me again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, cool. That's awesome. All right, I'm gonna move to Gary's view. Okay. This is um, the perennial, perennial <laughs> M16 Eagle Galaxy, Eagle Nebula. Eagle Nebula. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm I'm having problems. My computer's not wanting to work right. So I'm from distracted. our perspective, it looks just great. Yep. Yeah. Alrighty. There we go. Pillars of creation. Very nice. Lots of star formation going on in there. Not anymore. Stephen Ron is saying oh, that yeah, in Georgia we have the Deerlick Astronomy yeah. Village. What does that mean? What's that? In in Stephen Ron is saying that in Georgia well, we have the Deerlick airplane. Astronomy Village. I'm gonna run around in circles with my arms spread out. Yeah. Like an airplane. Nice. We're going to see if this airplane's going to fly right in front of Saturn or not. Okay, here we go. So, I'm ready. No, it's too high. Sorry. Oh. That would be epic. That's going to be like an APOD astronomy photo of the day. If we get that. I didn't hear a word you just said. Is yeah, it's loud there? Yeah. yeah. All right. All right, I'm going to move yeah. on they'll, to... They'll fly F-18s out of this airport, and that just... Yeah, you, you hear those. I've moved on to Roy's view. And I'm guessing M-17? M-5. M-5. Bob. M-5. Wow. I should read the little text at the top of the screen. <laughs> yes, be a little hint. Yeah, M-5 would be pretty low in the west at this point. So... So good work. Yes. Yeah, M5 is one of these ones that typically has that extra... It's, it's got a fairly bright star near all that um, that central portion of the globular... Or globular. Cluster, or globular. Don't hate on the globulars. Globular. globular. Well, my my father-in-law had a good thing about this earlier this week because in my... kind of the front room of the house, I have a series of globes on top of the bookshelf. And he said, well, so it's a cluster of globes. Does that make it a globular cluster? <laughs> so... I'm, I'm married into nerds, which this makes me happy. Nice. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, well, that's fantastic. 
beautiful view. Okay, yep. I, this is great. Look at this. so many objects, so little time. Oh no, we've, we've seen that. We've seen In that. Let's just do it. is low. We'll just stare oh, at Saturn. Low metallicity. How much more time have we got with Saturn? Um, probably another ten minutes, maybe. I'll be maybe. back tomorrow. And w let's take it, let's get another look at your setup, Thad, because I think this is great. We can actually see your your telescope. Yeah, let's see, can do this. Turn off the screen. Yeah. So, wow, Roy is just at high speed here. Yeah. So it, so it's a Edge HD nine and a quarter inch on a, a C gem, and um, I've had it a little over three years now, but it's, uh, you know, still performing quite well. Yeah. You can see. I mean, I got Saturn in there and. Even at uh, with a three x Barlow, you, you can see it really just hasn't moved out of the the field of view the uh, the entire time here. I really haven't had to make any adjustments in um, the direction of the mount at all, so it's behaving quite nicely tonight. The the card of Saturn in front of the telescope, we have to wiggle a little bit. Yeah, yeah. you got to wiggle that a little bit. Yeah, you know, run the hair dryer in front of it <laughs> to get it to wave a little too. So. <laughs> Uh, Mike Perry says, a quick Google search says it's named after Deer Lick Gap in North Carolina. Oh. Okay. Learn something go. old every day. <laughs> that is awesome. Uh, okay. I, I only learned about you once, Gary. No, All right, I'm going to move to Roy's view. Oh. I don't know what this is. NGC 7023. That would be the iris nebula. Oh, this is the iris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, me. Blown out in the center. What is it? It's a party. Well, so so I mean, is it uh, like what are we seeing here? So I mean, it's it's one of these nice combination of emission, reflection, and uh, and dark nebulae. The, the thing is, there's there's so much dust that the overall color tends to be bluish rather than the kind of reddish that you get. From the hydrogen and the emission nebula, so there's there's plenty of dust around this system, and you can have, kind of even see it that the number of stars really drops off, especially to the right of the frame. There, the dust is exceptionally thick in uh, in that portion. Also, where you know, um, Over here. Um, where we have the, the cursor, where was the the cursor right now? Um, but also to the the other side of the nebula that you know you can see there's there's kind of a void of stars over there. But that's because of the dust that's associated with this complex is. Um, is blocking the light from the stars behind it. You probably don't want to see Scott and I, so let me yep. get Saturn back up here. I'm pretty. No, we're we're both rather pretty. Aren't we are we? pretty. Yeah. There we go. This is one of those objects that looks great in in three color. In yes. three color. Yeah. 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 In fact, I mean, Fraser, you, I got a shot of this. I think it was last summer, and you, you featured it in the universe today. So thank you for that. But uh, thank you. No. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> All right, so. But uh, but yeah, the iris is you know just this gem in uh, in Cepheus, just this gorgeous, gorgeous nebula. And this is a nice shot showing really that incredible amount of detail near that that bright center star. So yeah, you get the dust and it just that that center star blows it out. Yep. Uh, so Helen Reed is saying, uh, I have the VSP working on the Chromecast this week. Last week I tried to cast on the live stream on YouTube, but it didn't work. Oh, and nice. She, yeah, and so tonight she cast the Chrome browser tab of the event page with the video full screen, and that did work. So if you've got a Chromecast, which I, as a Canadian I am not permitted to have them. So a, oh, yeah. Uh, so as a, uh, as a Canadian, we don't have Chromecast yet. But, uh, yeah, that sounds great. That's awesome. Thanks, Helen. Uh, so you can watch this. I'm. I really think these Chromecasts are going to be the future of this. Like, wouldn't it be cool if people could say that they want to watch the virtual star party, and then at the appropriate time, their television just turns on and the virtual star party appears on their television? How, people should how always say they want to watch the. Virtual I know. I know. So I think this this technology is going to be great. So I'm. I'm. It's really cool to see how people are starting to use this thing. I no, wholeheartedly embrace it. Awesome. Thanks for yeah. letting us know that it's showing up on the. Yeah. On the. BTL743 says, why do we not have a camera to watch meteors? We have tried to figure this out. And why don't is, you have one, Brian? Yeah, Brian. <laughs> it is complicated. It is really hard. Um, <laughs> we really, we, we, this has been sort of on the list of things. We have a big checklist of things that we want to do, and getting a, uh, a live view of a meteor shower is one of the things we want. And so the thought is we will have like some kind of wide view of the sky, just leave it running, and every 30 seconds or so it just takes another picture, and then if we see a meteor in the 
in the picture will all stop and take a look at it and go, ooh, and then it'll get refreshed and it'll be gone. Or maybe something additive, like all the medias will get added together over the course of the of the party. But technically, it's been really difficult to sort of get that happening live and going into a DSLR and then the images being broadcast into the start party. So if anyone has an idea on, on how we could do that, uh, I'm all ears because this is on my wish list. I want to do auroras too. Wouldn't that be cool? We could do the same thing. Let's set a camera up and over the course of the start party, we'll just keep watching the aurora unfold. So well, if you send me up north, if you pay for my ticket to go up north, I will bring you aurora every week. Yeah. Every week. <laughs> You'll never come back from, send, from send Alaska. Send me the Yukon Territory. Yeah, or, or the Yukon, and that's it. Yeah, all right. Sure, it's cheap up there. We could send you cheap. in a one-way trip to the Yukon yeah, or I Mars. Yeah, one-way, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. All right, I'm going to move to Bill's view here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but my you know my list. I want I want to get a picture of the uh, International Space Station, which I caught. So obviously, if I had my DSLR broadcasting live, then we would have seen the ISS move through it. But uh, yeah. yeah, I want to see some satellites. I want to see the aurora. I want. I think see... it's something we can do. Um, I'll look at flybys in my area. Yeah. Like a live view of ISS would yes. be off the hook. Yeah, I mean, and something I can bring in with my binoculars. Yeah, because you can get like the H shape of the ISS if you, if you time it right. So, um, anyway, yeah. So that's so I I got a big wish list. So Brian, you you have clearly you've itched a sore point, and I really <laughs> want to fix it. So, uh, I I challenge you, Brian. To yeah. This, yeah. It's uh, it's up to you. Um, Sterling Gothrop says globular because it glows. I think that's exactly the right reason to call them globular. Clusters. Because it was. Because they glow. Because they, they glow. They or, glow. or I'm thinking because it's like a globe shape of stars, <laughs> very spherical. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, that's why. Or I because I, I use them in blooper reels and it makes them even funnier. <laughs> uh, Bill McLaughlin, what have we got? The elephant. Uh, that is IC thirteen ninety six. Wow. A portion of which is this portion of which here is sometimes called the elephant's trunk nebula. That is a nice wide field shot. Yeah, that's so. terrific. And that was with the FSQ. And I have, and it's hard, I'll, let me load, I've got a color one, but it, because it's not as sensitive a, a camera, it's not going to uh, to look quite as I don't good. think Fraser's going to care that much. Where did it go? Is, if it's in color, if I want... If it's in color, if there's yeah. one star in there and it's a color, it's great. <laughs> I'm, I'm a happy guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you need to just like use your paint tool and color this image, <laughs> that would, that would be fine by me. All right, so print these out, get your Crayolas out, and then yeah. just take a take boom. A uh, Ronald Minch says a forty-one megapixel Lumina phone will the sensitivity of it help? I, I don't think the sensitivity of a I mean that's a that's a sick amount of oh. megapixels, and it's a great camera, but I mean it doesn't compare to the gigantic lens of a DSLR. So I think. Uh, no, and we've got the right tools. It's just we haven't figured out how to put it all together yet. And Gary got some good shots of uh, one of the Perseids last night. Yeah. Well, Gary, I, can you show off those images? Are you still yeah. struggling with your computer? Yeah, hang on. I'm, everything is being cranky tonight. <laughs> oh. we, we, were, we were proposing that maybe turning on some kind of high-voltage machine right next to your computer could perhaps it, cause an issue. Yeah, yeah, that's a possibility, but yeah, I... It's nah. actually NSA, hacking <laughs> yeah. into everything. Yeah. <laughs> no, even the, the cameras They're being cranky, right and that's nowhere near the... Uh, Are there five men in black suits in your front yard? That's them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, one other thing, if people can help me as well, I've heard that uh, when, you're a subs when, you've, when you're subscribed to my channel on YouTube... The videos that I'm uploading are showing up in your feed, but the uh, these live events that we're doing aren't showing up in your feed, and I wonder if that's been fixed. I've put in a, a trouble ticket to, to Google, so if anyone knows that they got an announcement for the last couple of, of events that we've done, that would be great to know. All right, I'm gonna, that, that color view is just gorgeous. It's a uh, yeah, it's not quite as clear, but you can see you know in this area you can see that same uh -huh. elephant's trunk area, the dark yeah. spot. Yeah. And that, that star is orange, and that's all I really need to know. Yeah, you need to have an orange star. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All this talk of black and white, but I'm, I'm glad you got the two machines running side by side. 
So if people haven't seen, last week we showed off your, oh. your setup, and it's just amazing. You've taken this poor mount, this poor pier mount, and then just jammed on, what, 12 telescopes? With yeah, we, we've, we've abused it badly. Well, no, actually, it, we're, we're short of its maximum, but still, it's a, it's a lot of stuff on one. <laughs> but the biggest problem, it becomes, you know, you know, juggling all this stuff like the proverbial one-armed paper hanger, you know. It's too many, too many pieces of equipment to deal with at once. And how's cable management on that thing? Well, it all runs it all runs through the mount, so yeah. um, it, it the, it's about at again close to maximum in terms of how much cable I can get through the mount without it interfering with it. But if you use the right flexible cable and you run uh, you know nylon uh, uh, abrasion sleeve around it, it works pretty well. Right. Uh, Eric Charlin says Fraser eBay got one on the way. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I could buy a Chromecast through eBay, but I just I, I can't bring myself to pay three times the price for it. So hey, hey Fraser. Yeah. I, you have some friends in the United States, yeah? Yeah, they can't even buy them. They're sold out everywhere. But yeah, uh, yeah I heard that they are sold yeah, out. Yeah. I will I will call on those favors shortly. Yeah. Um. So the uh, people in the comments were saying that we should fly Scott to Alaska. So I'll go to Alaska, but yeah. how about you? I'll go by cruise. Totally give me a cruise up to Alaska. Oh, and yeah. I can go and see Russia from someone's house. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder whose house that is, yeah. Um, all right, well, I'm, I've moved over to Roy's view. Roy, what are we seeing? M101, a nice yeah. galaxy. Of nice. course we are. Look at that. Oh, it's gorgeous. Such a grand spiral design there. Yeah, but it should, it looks like it's taken a hit. Like it's very lopsided. It it is yeah it is somewhat lopsided. Um, and again, history of evolution of these things. I mean, you know, maybe if we could piece together all of the the literally trillions of interactions that have happened in its past to try to understand well why are the why is it you know have a higher density of spiral arms on one side than the other, you know this. Thing is, I mean, it's fairly nearby. It's about 18 million light years off, but we don't know what other galaxies it may have interacted with. You know, it's, it's it's difficult to dig up the history of of these things because most of our picture of space is is really two dimensional. It's only yeah. some nearby things we get a three dimensional view, and then how do you even get the three dimensional view inside of the galaxy? That becomes even more difficult. So trying to kind of piece together, well, what the heck happened to you to make you look so lopsided? And yeah, it's not. Uh, yeah, it's, not a straightforward question. Again, somebody if somebody out there wants a PhD topic. That's it's probably something. If not, somebody's PhD already, topic, you say somebody mm. isn't already working on it. Oh, okay. Oh, why great. is why does see? I picked it out. M one hundred one looks lopsided. PhDs go. <laughs> um, okay, so Gary, check this out. So Gary's got a meteor. Yep, that's uh, that's the first one, and then I've got a second capture of the same one. What number is that? And what constellation is that? Like that's pretty all sky. So that's the summer triangle, I bet. Is the yeah, asterism me, that I'm seeing in let that? Let me view. put that one up. Um, come on, screen share. Oh, little buddy. Everything's just uh, being cranky. Andrew Planet says he just saw his first ever one a few seconds ago. First ever meteor. That's amazing. Picture didn't happen. The <laughs> picture didn't happen, Andrew. <laughs> get back out there and get a picture, or it is just it hasn't happened. No, that is awesome. Seeing That's, your first meteor. That, totally, yeah. yeah. That is. Fantastic. There's a second half of it, and I'm going to go. You know, I'm thinking of a way I can put these online if somebody wants to scan through them. I've got tons of shots this thing takes. Well, you said that it's configured to do this kind of automatically. Well, it's configured to take a picture on motion. I take a picture once a minute. Yeah. So every minute I take a whole sky. And then I've got it set that if it sees motion, now a light turning on, a lot of things are triggering the motion. I probably get. I need maybe, to stop doing calisthenics in your backyard. <laughs> yeah, you know, five or ten percent of the total, I get motion on, maybe less. So but Gary, I want to make a suggestion to you: mm -hmm. uh, upload a whole pile of these into Google Plus, like like just as a big as a whole folder. Yeah. And it should auto awesome them into a time lapse for you. Well, what 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 are the format the pictures are in? JPEGs. JPEG. Yeah. yeah. So Google Plus will, if you upload a bunch of pictures that were taken very close to each other, it will turn it into a uh, an animated GIF for you. I'll um yeah I'll go through and I'll see if I can put them online so we yeah, can scan just, them too. Yeah, just upload the just upload the whole folder and into a new 
album and and Google Plus should just do the rest for you. Yeah, you don't even have to share it out. You yeah, you don't have to share it. It'll just make it for you, and then you can share yeah. out the uh, the animated GIF, and that would look really cool. I think. I will look at that once yeah. I figure out why nothing else is working here. <laughs> I, 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 my questions. money is on the massive electrical discharges that you've been letting off on your uh, your, on your table. It, yeah, I would say I probably pissed the computer off. Uh, Ethan Chapel says, I think Moon Glow All Sky cameras automatically save a picture or video when it detects motion. Is that what you've got? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what I've got. Um, uh, oh, Stuart says, uh, tell Bill that I bought a field flattener. Bill? Yeah, Stuart cool. bought a field flattener. They're, they're always nice. You, you, they're, they're just a little difficult sometimes because it's very critical that you get the. Uh, distance from the flattener to the image plane uh, to the specs within about two percent, I think. Is that how you make crop circles? <laughs> uh, that's that's what we call the bulldozers out here. Yeah. Not those fields. Yeah, that's actually the hardest part of a field flattener is getting the distance to the chip right. I'm gonna move to Roy's view now. The bubble. The bubble. 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 NGC seventy six thirty five, aka the bubble. Thad, go. Bubble he is. Nebula. Rattle off everything you know about the Bubble Nebula now. <laughs> so Bubble Nebula, the bubble, blah, 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 blah. bubble Nebula, again, kind of a hydrogen uh, emission nebula. And the thing is, because the, the star in the middle is so hot, it actually kind of carves out the area around it. You have this radi- pressure from the radiation. The heat actually kind of forces the gas and dust out from the middle there. And so you have what looks like kind of this hollow area in space. Right, so, uh, so wait, wait, can we do it in three? The two of us together. Okay, hold on. Yes, I'm gonna, there's, here, hollow, here, yeah. there's Thad and Scott, the bubble nebula. Bubble nebula. <laughs> so imagine there's a star in the middle there. It's star in the, okay, there I'm we go. Star in the middle. Yay. <laughs> hollows out. Got it. And so is that the star, that bright star there, the one that's hollowing it out? Um, That's a good question. Why isn't it in the middle then? Yeah, exactly. Angles. So trigonometry. That's why. <laughs> Chances are, well, the thing is, maybe maybe something hollowed it out and then moved and left it mm-hmm. behind. But we don't. Again, this would be something to uh, aliens. Kind of look up a little bit more on. Does, does this sound like another PhD dissertation? Or at why? least something that a grad student look at for a while. Yeah, I would also like if while the grad students at it, like them to also figure out why the propeller nebula looks like a propeller. That would be great. Because um, I like. Propellers. Yeah. And also, the Saturn there. Nebula. Why does it look like Saturn? The Pac-Man Actually, the Nebula. Saturn looks like the Saturn Nebula. What the did they Nebula. call it before Pac-Man? I would like to know. The, the pie with the slice taken out of it. Slice of pie. <laughs> I'm gonna go back to Gary's. The mint meat awesome. Nebula. <laughs> that is so cool. So, but I mean, the fact that you caught two of them, right? Yeah. Had to. That's the same one. Oh, it's the same one, just yeah. it so took two it, pictures really quickly? Yeah, you see where this one is. Let me, um, I could probably put them into my thing. Let me uh, pop, I'll pop one up here now. This is the first piece. Hang on. I'll share it. Uh, that should have shared it. Yeah. See how this right here, the next picture takes it from here to here. Wow. That must have been a fluke, or it was detecting motion. Yeah, it was detecting the motion. Yeah. So it, it took a shot, and that's one exposure, and then it said, oh, there's still motion. Let's take another shot. Interesting. So I'll, uh, I'll scan through these and see what I can come up with. All right. Oh, Roy's got another view. Let's go pack. Roy's just a machine tonight. The dumbbell? M27. Are you looking at the top of the window yeah, there? Yes, now I am. Now he's, I now remember now. But then he's going to steer me wrong. He's like the Fraser Kane Nebula. <laughs> <laughs> this Scott is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> this dumb guy doesn't know his uh, Nebula Nebula. <laughs> um, Eric Briggs is saying, Neat science, the Google Doodle for Monday is Schrodinger's cat because of his birthday. Is it Schrodinger or his cat's birthday? Meow. Meow. It might be, it might not. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's both actually. Until, <laughs> you gotta, until I'm proven that you got to do a Google both. search to find out. Yeah. Yeah. I've always loved that T-shirt that says "Wanted Schrodinger's cat dead and alive." <laughs> <laughs> that's great. This is this is an object that looks great in color. The yes, dumbbell. it does. I'm yeah. I, I'm gonna try to 
to th- yeah. put that yeah. out again. I'm going to try to do a tricolor image of that next. Yes. Like now? Do it. Yes, I'm slewing back to it right now. Oh, yes. That would be terrific. I, I took that about 10 minutes ago, but I'm going to slew back to it while I show the last of the ones I got. Okay. That's I great. Of that right All right, now. I'm going to move over to Bill's view then. Okay, this is the Cave Nebula, and I've got three different shots with the three different instruments of this. This is the wide field monochrome with the FSQ. Uh, Ronald mentioned saying it's Orion. Actually, Ronald, Orion is uh, down right now, so which you said never mind. So yeah, we won't see Orion until December or f- yeah. five in the morning. Yeah. Or five in the morning. Or you know, get Stellarium and study the night sky. Uh, Connor Triffin is saying, what is the best aperture to use with a shutter speed of around 20 seconds? As m- open an aperture as you... So I guess Connor's talking about uh, uh, doing a wide field shot with his DSLR, and if you're going to do a 20 second exposure, what's the best aperture? As wide open as yours will go. Mine will go to 2.8 of my 14 millimeter. Uh, so I actually closed it down to 4 because it actually it's a little, gets a little sharper at 4 than at 2.8. But it depends on the uh, sort of the size of yours. If it can go down to 1.4, 1.8, uh, then do that. But just be careful. The focus becomes more critical the farther down you go. Yeah, exactly. And so I, I actually nudged it back to four just because I wanted to have it have to be less, more, more crisp and clear. So. Um, and this is a zoomed-in view of also the Cape Nebula. Also, uh, this is with, with uh, about twice the focal length. Very cool. Also monochrome, and I'll open the color one here. I'm next. ready. I'm ready. Let's see. Cape. Where is it? Uh, uh, Gary Jason. Not taking colors, just to watch them throw a tantrum. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Where's my God. color image? Uh, Jason said, "Oh, that's that awesome." Is awesome. Uh, Gary, Jason has said that if you put a couple of consecutive frames in the Hangout or in the event folder, he'll gift sequence them for you right now. Um, well, I can't do it this instant. No, your computer kind of is barely behaving right now. So. Um, and the thing is, see, with all the pictures, it, this thing takes several hundred, uh, how many shots, and I'll have, you know, 200, 300 motion shots each night. So it takes a little bit just to go through them to see ones that have anything yeah. in Yeah. Uh, Thad, what's this? Hey, I've got something in color. Yeah? So, now generally, when we've shot this, these two have been much closer together in the field of view. And you hear an airplane. And we hear an airplane. Yeah. Is this Alberio? Yes. Nice. Yes, this, so this is Alberio or Alboreo. Alboreo. Alboreo, Alboreo. Well. Dun, dun, dun. So Wait, we, that other star's moving. No, no, it's not. But uh, but yeah, this is this just to give you some kind of feel for um, the uh, the view with the the camera I'm shooting with here. So I, I took out I had a three x Barlow in when I was shooting Saturn. So that's essentially a focal ratio of f30 for uh, my telescope. I've taken that out, so I'm back down to f10. But with that and this camera, that's how far apart the uh, two stars in Albareo are with this kind of setup. Usually wow. you've shot this. Yeah, usually like they're like almost property. on top of each other, yeah. So I'm going to try to get Epsilon Lyrae because I think that's going to look pretty cool with this yeah. kind of setup. So yeah, that'll be great. Uh, Fitness898 says, what's the best time to see the most meteors? After yeah. midnight. Oh. Yeah. When yeah. they're falling. As, because as Earth is turning and going around the sun... The side of the Earth that's... Um, I can't see you. Uh, but keep using your yeah, hand yeah. gestures. Yeah. Hand I'll, I will do it for you. So, yeah. Right, so so as Earth is turning, <laughs> it's the, the port that's right. So the hand that's closest to the camera, that's also moving toward the direction of the meteors. And so, yeah. So that's pew, 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 pew. Yeah. Um... You all right, Fraser? Yeah, yeah, no, I'm just uh, I'm just reading some of the comments. <laughs> <laughs> I've not pulled up any of the comments. Yeah, it, I I know it's normally what I'm doing. Um, are they good YouTube comments? <laughs> no, yeah, no. Are you kidding? Our fans on YouTube are some of the most are behaved. Are or... Yeah, they're they bring a level of quality and uh, you know and calm 
politeness that YouTube just doesn't even know. Hey, you know, I have to say, too, the, the YouTube commenters on Tony Darnell's channel that I'm doing Space Fan News with them, they were really, really good. I was yeah. very impressed with the quality comments. Yeah, <laughs> was it just, was it I just, was, it yeah. was my first actually produced video, and I'm like, great, I'm going to have YouTube unleashed upon me, and <laughs> they, were, they were great, they were some fantastic comments. Yeah, um, yeah, no, they're, they're really great. So for, for people who don't know, you've been stepping in occasionally for, uh, for Tony Darnell for Deep, for Deep Astronomy. Yeah. And doing and some of the Space Fan News. So I, ha I can't really hear you right now. Oh, another airplane? Yeah. Is the sky falling again? Hey, can you mute the, the surrounding, too? Mute that <laughs> yeah, mute that plane. plane. Yeah. Um, no, um, so, yeah, with Deep Astronomy, with Tony Darnell doing Space Fan News. And um, we're also doing Hubble Hangouts with the Hubble awesome. Space Telescope team at uh, STSI. That's terrific. Yeah, so everyone should go check that out. Deep Astronomy. Yes. It's T. Darnell is the YouTube user. And it's, yeah, T. Uh, Darnell is Tony Darnell. Yeah. Um, and for the, the Hangouts that we're doing, it's on the Hubble Space Telescope Google+. Plus. And if you go to hubblesite.org, you can see the upcoming Hangouts we have. We have one on Tuesday and one on Wednesday this coming week. Yeah, and Tony Darnell is like the nicest human being ever. He so. is. Tony yeah. is awesome sauce. Yeah. Uh, Michael Daumer asks, what about that asteroid that recently passed inside the orbit of the moon? That was uh, that was actually like a month ago, wasn't it? There was one that passed relatively re close. It was only like five times. Uh, DZ-15, 2003 DZ-15, I think, was the one. But it wasn't that close. This happens all the time. Yeah. These asteroids all they the pass. Time. Yeah. Uh, Bill, you've updated your photo. Yeah, NGC seven eight two two. The what nebula? You know, I don't think it has a name. Really? Let's name it right now. Let's name it right now. Let's see. The VSP nebula. Yeah. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Also known Close as enough. Sharpless one seventy one. Um. It doesn't have a name. Uh, let's call it the Bald Nebula because Cedar Cedar Blad two fourteen. Um, it's got elephant trunks, uh, plural. Hmm. So it's like Gronish or something. Yeah. yeah. And it's also the Sharpless one seventy one, and it's about eight hundred to one thousand light years away. Neat. Cool. That's awesome. That's the first. Thank you very much for bringing this thing to us for the first time. Hey, we'll have another shot of it here in just a second. In color, perhaps? In color? No. It's uh, unfortunately, only one color. Is it yeah. in super color? He switched to color from, yeah. All right, I'm going to move to Gary's view. Uh, Lagoon M8. Lagoon. I actually got it to work long enough to take that one. <laughs> now your, your telescope and your computer is just going to have a seizure? Yeah. But this this one's got some really neat little things going on inside. Yeah. That Thad can tell you all about. Look at that. Oh, that's look the, look that's at that the dark one there. And there's a the creature upper, in there. Look at the upper right there of his. Yeah. Look at that dark. Oh, here we go. Nod. You know, sort of David dark. Star in there somewhere. Right. And it probably hasn't. Well, that's the thing. If we if we account for even the distance for it. Maybe it started fusion and just hasn't knocked that shell away from itself yet, or maybe sometime in the next 10,000 or 20,000 years, fusion will start in there. But that is a star being born. That is what it looks like while it's still kind of cocooned away inside of its EGG, evaporating gas globule, before um, yeah, before fusion turns on. And then all these other stars, these bright ones, are the ones that they've already blown away all their yes. material, right? Yeah. So that star cluster there that is um, formed from uh, from the same material as and the, a bunch of them will probably go kaboom. Very likely, especially yeah. any that are buried deep inside the nebula that are causing it to to fluoresce the way that we see it. I mean, hydrogen alpha light, this 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 red glow of hydrogen that we get from these things, is essentially a fluorescent effect because the star in the middle there is dumping out um, huge amounts of ultraviolet light. The electrons get really jazzed up, jump up to higher energy With levels. jazz hands. Ah! And then as they come back down, they emit the kind of characteristic red light of hydrogen alpha, and also hydrogen beta, which is bluish, also hydrogen gamma, hydrogen delta, which are purplish. So there's, there's a whole bunch going on there. The red one is the most prevalent, though, to the, the naked eye. 
Uh, old Jorgen Nordhagen is saying, you're not informed an asteroid came through at half lunar distance this Friday, just between, just two days before. So what's the asteroid, Ole? Ole? Um, I want to look that up. That would be great. Uh, yeah, no, these asteroids pass within the, the, you know, between the Earth and the Moon and outside. They get pretty close <laughs> they several times a year. More often yeah, than yeah. Than <laughs> yeah we, we announce this quite a bit, and we have stories on it. So, But uh, no, I didn't, uh, wasn't aware of this one. I am often not informed. How come Man. nobody informed me? Yeah, you know, you should, you should... I thought you were a publisher or something. I know, I know. <laughs> you, you're the universe yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> universe last week. Uh, I'm going to go back to Roy's view now. Uh, that Roy? one is SH2142. That is the Wizard Nebula. Oh, hey, you know what? I'd like to see like a full-color view of the Wizard Nebula. Like, could you perhaps supply one? I, I could. Did you put on his wizard hat? Too? All right, let's see. This is great, black and white, live. I like it, but I want to see something you maybe spend a lot of time with. Something you've really hey, worked on. color. That counts. There, there we go. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. Is this using the Hubble palette? Yes, it is. Is this uh, using the Hubble Space Telescope? No, it's no, not. It's not. Okay. It's not. We'll look so, at those later this week. But what the Hubble palette is, is, is it maps um, hydrogen to a greenish color. Oxygen to a bluish color and um, sulfur to a reddish color, and so when you combine them, you know you can kind of see here where there's a lot of hydrogen, hydrogen and, and sulfur kind of to the the left, that kind of crescent shape there, and then oxygen off, or sorry, that's to the right is the kind of crescent shape with a, the hydrogen and sulfur, and then this bluish glow off to the left is where there's oxygen present. Ah, amazing! You totally yeah. see the wizard there. Look at his hat little hat, his little hand pointing out, casting magic spells. He's shooting balls of fire at No, him. he's casting magic missile in the magic dark. Magic missile, magic missile, magic missile in the dark, attacking the darkness. <laughs> that is great. And then he's like, he's appeared in like a puff of smoke and you can see the clouds roiling underneath him. That's just fabulous. What a great picture. You should be a role player. <laughs> I used to write role playing game books. I, it sounds like it. I know, I know. And here's your other color picture. Now Google it. What game did I write for? So you just built this. I Boy. just built that. Out of oh, that's terrific. Three 90-second red, green, and blue filtered images. Very nice. That's great. Tracking is so dead on for that. I mean, those yeah. stars round. Um... But hey, I've got something else in view here. Ronald Minch asks, "How big are meteors? They're small, right? They're they're sand sized well, and smaller. Most of them, yeah, like grain of sand size. If you if you're seeing them bright and lasting across the sky longer, you might be getting up to like pebble size. Yeah, but you know, but not bam bam, just pebbles. <laughs> I'm gonna go home now. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We're almost out of time. We're almost yeah. out of time. Uh, Sterling Gothrop says, "A wizard nebula is never late." <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Always arrives exactly when it means to. Oh, that's terrific. Okay, I'm going to go back to Thad's view. Is this the other double? This is the double double. Double double. So I don't know how. So well on the bottom right, you're seeing the, yep. the two sugars, and the on the top left, <laughs> the two cream. Double cream, yeah. To make this god awful oh, Tim Hortons yeah. concoction, yeah. So gross. <laughs> No, you can really see the the double stars there. Yeah, let me that, see if I can adjust the game. That up. is great. And so this is the one that's in uh, Ursa Major, right? It's in Lyra. Oh, okay. It's right near Vega. Um, and if you just look with binoculars or you look with your finder scope, you see two stars. But if you zoom in, uh, with the, if you have, you know good enough focal length telescope and high enough mag magnification, then you see that each of those two stars is actually also a binary pair. And, and so if you have a higher telescope, then each of those splits into a binary pair? Oh, we stop bifurcating at some point okay. here. Right. Actually, right here. This is where we stop. I so. heard you like double, so I put a double in your double. You can <laughs> Endless doubling. Has anybody found a triple-triple? A triple-triple? <laughs> oh, that's a heart clogger right there. Caster's a double triple. The star caster in uh, Gemini. So bollocks. 
<laughs> oh, well, we're reaching the end of our hour, so I'm going to start to wrap things up, and I can see that we've already lost Bill, and we've already lost... Well, Gary's got... I got something new. A cl new cluster. That's the uh, the number six thing that Messier found, the butterfly cluster. Ah, oh, yeah. Yes. This is the one my students, when they first came across this last summer, they're calling it the Batman cluster, because I guess <laughs> to them it looked like the bat signal. Yeah, you know? that works too. Da, da, or maybe da, 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 da. I'm okay. Batman. I don't see it. Turn, turn I see the butterfly the for there. sure. Turn your head to the side and tilt your head. We're the way we're seeing it in our camera is backwards. So you sh you want to tilt your head to the left, about forty degrees, and that's kind of the center axis of the bat signal. Yep. The wings kind of come off to either side. So so yep. in Scorpius, Batman is constantly being called to action. If Scorpius is in the sky. Okay. That's yes. Great. My students have spoken through me. <laughs> through you. <laughs> Hi, students. Uh, well, awesome. Well, uh, Bill, we lost Bill. Like, we actually lost Bill. Oof. Yeah, it looks like he was struggling with some technology by the end there. So, uh, Well, thanks, everybody. I'm going to say goodbye to everybody. Uh, thank you very much, Gary Ganella. I'm sorry you, you were struggling with your computer. Uh, hey, there's Bill. Bill's back. All right. Just, just in time to say goodbye, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> goodbye, oh. Bill. Oh, wait. Goodbye, Bill. Ooh. Oh, look at that. Just drops the mic. Bill just yeah. drops the mic and walks, walks out. There we are. Okay. Uh, one more image. <laughs> that is fabulous. Drop 500 billion stars. Wow. With a couple satellite galaxies. A couple satellite galaxies. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting measure. It's coming right for us. Thanks. Uh, oh, that's amazing, Bill. Thank you so much. And uh, Roy, thank you very much. Uh, time to go turn off the light? Yeah. That would, that would be nice. <laughs> and maybe hook up the gadget lets you turn off the light remotely. So. Yeah. I don't know if I to turn the gadget on. <laughs> yeah. And thanks, uh, Thad and Scott. This is awesome that people can meet and meet, and meet space. Yes. And that's... And well, it's not our first time. We've met a while ago. No, yeah. I know. No, no. But, but first time VSPing together. True. So. Yeah, <laughs> Is peeing together. Hey, don't cross the streams. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got, I've got to shut this thing down. Okay, so uh, so I don't know what's next. Uh, maybe astronomy cast. I'm not sure where Pamela is. She's still on her mighty uh, European uh, trip. Sure. Uh, and then I'm trying to think. Well, then what's going to happen? Tuesday. Tuesday. What's happening Tuesday? The your Hubble, Hubble hangout. Hangout? All right. The Hubble top shots. Uh, which we're going to be talking about the the top 100 uh, images coming out of Hubble, but it allows also the public to vote for their own, not only the most beautiful images that are more striking, but also scientifically significant. So what Hubble has been able to uncover about the universe that we didn't know before. And remember that we want to have them join the... The virtual star party. I, I will do what I can. I will. Yeah. I will talk with them. And say, hey, you know, can I get some time on Hubble and yeah. live stream it somehow? Yeah. Somehow, you know, we'll take requests. We'll can, take can requests. We install the Hangout plugin on the Hubble Space <laughs> Telescope. That yeah, can. that would be amazing. And then Wednesday uh, is the next Hubble Hangout on Comet Ison and getting more data for it. So if you've got clear skies right now and you've stuck through this, I then. Get outside and watch the meetings from here until morning. It should be wonderful. So, I got clouds, so I'm done. But uh, the rest of you, go on without me. All right. Thanks, everybody. It was great to see you all again this week. Thanks, everyone, for watching, and we will see you next week. Good night. Good night, everyone. Have a good night. Uh, yeah.